Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates and beautiful things happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender as an app. And this week we do have a couple of things that you guys want to take a look at. First off, for those using Blender 2.83, the LTS version, the Blender 2.83.14 LTS release is now here. And this one comes with eight bug fixes. So just in case you're experiencing any of this, you can simply download this and update the version of Blender that you're working with. So the Linux version is available. You can get that on Snap and also on Steam. Mac version, you can only get this on Steam. And for the Windows version, you can get it on both the Windows Store and also on Steam. So just in case you're using the LTS release, you can and simply go through and update yours and with that said we're going to dive directly into blender 3.0 the alpha where we can take a look at the brand new spline feature that now exists for the geometry node so with blender 3.0 the alpha open right here there's a couple of things that you know they are new now in blender but today we're going to focus on the new curve implementation for geometry nodes so this thing is quite very easy to get a hang of and i'm just going to go ahead and explain some things that might be a bit tricky for most of you guys so the first one which we have here is a single part so I'm just gonna go ahead and add that part right there and actually move it to a point where it's visible and from here we would go in and add a simple circle so with this here the first things you would notice is curves currently don't have the geometry nodes it doesn't have it as a modifier so for you to be able to access this you need to have a geometry within your viewport which once selected you can now convert that or you know add the geometry modifier too so once you have this here how do you now work with the curves so your curves, you can import them by simply using the object info, which you can click, drag up to a point, select the curve which you want to work with, in this case our not part, or you can simply click, drag from your outliner, your inspector, and drag that right over to this place. So at this point, if you get these curves in here and you go ahead and connect this, you will literally notice one thing only happens. And what happened is there is now a brand new point here, which actually identifies where this object information is at this point, but you don't necessarily see anything changing. So there are only two nodes available for curves right now, which the first one is convert to mesh, and the second one is resampling of curves. So real quick, I'm just gonna go ahead and explain how this thing works. The convert to mesh just simply converts your curves to mesh, which is basic. And from this part is where you get to see the number of points that you have. And this is our geometry spreadsheet, just in case you have no idea. So within the geometry spreadsheet, you'll be able to see the number of points that you have. And how you can control the number of points that you have is by grabbing the curve resample or the resample curve. So once you throw that in, you can see that this point the number of points which you have is set to 10 and you can see that right here so the more you increase this you get more points you reduce it you get less points and this makes sense so you might also be asking what about the profile curve so if you do have a geometry that you want to use as a profile curve you can use that and in this case we can just simply wire this over to this part and you can see what we have but this is not really what I want to show you guys. I want to show you guys how you can scatter things across a given part, especially for those who like to use curves to scatter things around, or maybe you just want to simply align things to a given part by simply using curve. So originally, we know that for you to get things happening, you need a point distribute, which is, you know, like the very basic stuff. So you have to distribute points across a given surface, and then you also need a point instance. But the point distribute and the point instance works in a very interesting way, which means this actually scatters a point and then this instance is whatever geometry you load up within that point. So we no longer need this if you're working with a curve because the curve by itself already has this point. So all you need is a point instance to drop that there. So a very good example is uh, we're just gonna grab Suzanne and reduce her that small. And from here we can select and load up Suzanne. Now, once we do that, you can see we have Suzanne scattered within that given part. So some things to even keep in mind is with that there, we can also throw in a transform. So for those who might be asking, how do you now control this? Yep, you can throw in a transform. You can use the x-axis to control this transform. So at this point, we can scale this curve as much as we want. I wouldn't really recommend that you go in here and start scaling this stuff. Of course it works, but you know, it's not something I would recommend. I would always recommend that if you're working procedurally, try as much as possible to work within your procedural node and uh, whatever you can do within your procedural node, then you can go over to your viewport and start manipulating that. So in this case, we do have this, so you can do that. And if you like to increase the number of counts, let's say for the Suzanne head, for your light poles, for whatever geometry you're scattering, 
you can now even do some more stuff like this so this comes in extremely extremely handy for a whole lot of cases now there's also a very simple bug that i kind of experienced although i'll go in and explain this but before we do that let's proceed with this one so with this now you can now do even some crazier stuff so let's say for example you would want to let me just go ahead and uh, pull this one all the way up and get rid of this so you can see that we have this stuff here so let's say for example you would want to make copies or you would like to make a simple plane so if you like to make a simple plane we can click here drag and drop right over there and you can notice that we have that simple plane and we can now scale this back and forth so this way you now have a plane so you can actually make like a procedural plane depending on what you want now most people wouldn't find this very reasonable because at this point you can't really do some extrusion as extrusion doesn't exist within the node and probably you can really do a lot of sweeping but coming from houdini this works extremely fine because you can use this to create things like procedural tables and chairs and all that stuff so at this other point you can also use a different mesh all together or a different curve in this case all together and you can connect this curve to the profile and use that to drive and also make some very interesting stuff so with this profile here which is this particular model that we have here whatever changes that you do to this profile get implemented on this part so for those into motion graphic this is going to be very useful and also for those who are into creating some uh, pretty cool looking stuff this is also going to be very very useful so you can grab that and you can also grab a section like this and we can move this section let's also grab this other one and tap g on the keyboard and you can do some very crazy and interesting things with it so this way you can start modifying this stuff and at the same time with this there you can still choose to scatter things across that part so let's say we bring this down to a point like that and you want to scatter things across of course you can still do that and you can throw in a bunch of Suzanne's and you can see what you have here so let's also go in and scale that point all the way to that side and you can see what we have and at this case if you like to resample this of course you can also make a copy make a paste of this one and you can resample this particular part so we can select this one and we can resample this all the way down and we can just have a couple of Suzanne's like this if you also want to scale this you can also throw in a simple transform transform this bad boy so let's go in transform this connect this transform right here and you can choose to transform this and you can start making some very nice and creative things as you proceed so these are some very nice things that you can do with this although we did jump into a very tiny issue and that issue is this let's go ahead and load up what we had before so although we did jump into a very tiny issue so let me go ahead and ungroup this so that you guys can see what we have so one of the issues that we had with this procedural backdrop is this that once you're creating stuff with your spline and uh, you're just making it simple like this you cannot really use the boolean so the boolean node doesn't really work in this case so we tried a couple of things it doesn't work the boolean node works best once you've joined whatever you're making and then you throw in the boolean now once you throw in that boolean you get to notice that we have some artifacts like so so if i also go in and throw a subdivision so that you guys can see it properly if i throw in a subdivision at this point you can start noticing that we have those artifacts so if i increase that you can see the number of artifacts we're getting now i don't know why this is there but you know it's just one of those things to keep in mind when working with so we have this which is uh, basically the very same thing which we've just looked at and we can increase and reduce points and uh, we can do some very cool stuff so the idea for this one is instead of moving from the pivot point you get to move from this point so what i would suggest is for those who like to create something like this you need to make sure that your origin point is at this edge so that you can work with it actually i'm just going to go ahead and put this in the description so just in case you want to download it and test it out or maybe you want to see how this works then probably you can take a look at that now with that said for those who are into geometry nodes you're into working with these things you want to read more about geometry nodes we've already talked about where you can get more stuff but then if you are trying to take a look at some of the sample files that exist right now there is more and more stuff and this one is highly updated so you can go in and check it out for those looking for ways to play with procedural or create procedural buildings there's a sample file right here which you can tear open and start working with there's also some very nice stuff which you can also take a look at you can also take a look at the food you can take a look at the taco rice and so much more so the folks at blender foundation have actually 
created more like a ton of sample files which you can now work with and you can actually open these things and start experimenting with them and get good with the geometry node and with that said there's also an improved point instance node performance for those working with geometry node and at the same time there's also a very tiny update that deals with your node editor and while we're talking about the node editor there's also a very tiny update to the node editor that shows the frame label when a label is set and while we're talking about things that actually deals with visuals there is also a display indicator within your viewport so just in case you're working within your viewport and you clip anything so once you hit alt and b on your keyboard and you do a simple clipping so i'm just gonna go ahead and do that from here so let's uh, make sure that we have this applied and then let's do that you can now see that at this point this is set to clipped all right so previously this wasn't there but uh it's very cool to see that we have that right here and one more thing which i think i forgot to show you guys is one of the things that you can do with this is once you're done you can now go in and you can throw in something as simple as a solidifier so and these are pretty nice and a tiny updates that makes a lot of sense one more thing which makes a lot of sense for this week is the alembic export now export uv maps on every frame so if you're working with alembic and you're trying to export you can now export uv map on alembic on every frame and this makes the export of uv maps consistent with the mesh normal and uh so for anyone who is using the alembic workflow trying to export things from blender to other third-party apps this is uh awesome and with that said there's a very tiny read right here on the blender cloud so the big picture on beautiful pictures is a title and this is a very interesting read for those interested in lighting you know you're into look dev you might actually pick a tin or two while reading this and when we talk about things that you can pick up within the week we talked about mixer this is made available by the folks at ubisoft animation and we did go through to talk about how you can get started with it so right here is the documentation we did a whole video about it so just in case you find this interesting there's going to be an end note or card that will take you over to the video where you can watch this and see how you can get good with it and this add-on just simply makes blender multi-user so within the video we did talk about the things that you're going to find as challenges and how you can overcome these things and of course we did take a look at how and where you can get it and we also talked about this very nice creation and uh, it's just that some things don't really work at this point and most of those things that don't work on his own they currently work right here here with the ubisoft animation mixer so for anyone who would like to get this i'm going to put a link as well in the description where you can grab it and while we talk about things that you can grab if you also go over to our site 3d he has this beautiful add-on which you can get for free and it's for blender and it's known as auto apply transform now this auto apply transform is exactly what you get in maya in terms of freezing your transformation this is going to be very handy for those that are into animation and also rigging as you can freeze any of the models that you want in place and that would just simply freeze that particular point and transform or simply apply those transforms right there and while you can get this one for free there's also this beautiful creator artist developer that actually dropped all of his add-ons for free so if you want to get any of the add-ons that he has you can also get these things for free his name is captain hansode and these are beautiful stuff i'm actually excited about this one which is more like a spring sort of bouncy jiggly effect sort of um animation add-on that you can work with and you can also grab this one for free so if you're thinking about getting these ones these are for free you can get all of them all this stuff right here are for free and you might want to check these things out and this is more like it for those who are interested in the long-term support link to this is going to be in the description where you can check it out for those who are thinking about getting the mixer maybe you want to get some free geometry scenes or maybe you're thinking about getting some of these add-ons that we've talked about link to this is going to be in the description so do well to check these things out tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace